30 years ago today, the world's media watched as Terry Waite was released from captivity in Beirut. He'd last been seen five years earlier negotiating with kidnappers who were holding hostages, including Brian Keenan and John McCarthy. But in a dramatic turnaround, Terry Wade himself had been kidnapped by the extremists. To mark the anniversary of his release, he spoke to our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. Freedom at last. Terry Waite, released after nearly five years, held as a hostage underground in Beirut. Now, 30 years on since that release, does he have any regrets? It doesn't seem like 30 years. They've gone remarkably quickly. I still remember those days. Um, but strangely enough, you know, I don't look back and deeply regret them. Beirut in 1987 was an especially dangerous place. Racked by civil war, a city teeming with heavily armed militias who had already seized Western hostages. Terry Waite arrived hoping to get them released, but he was tricked into a meeting with jihadists that saw him kidnapped and held for years in solitary confinement. There were dark times. I was beaten on the soles of the feet with cable and um, I faced a, a mock execution. I was blindfolded and taken into another room. Well, my throat went dry um, because of fear. I'd never experienced that before. Uh, it wasn't afraid, I wasn't afraid of death so much as to how would I die. Other hostages at the time included the British and US journalists John McCarthy and Terry Anderson and the US academic Thomas Sutherland. Their cell was next to Terry's but his first meeting with John McCarthy was unorthodox. They decided they were going to move me now. So they wrapped me in this tape, carried me out, and threw me into the boot of this car and uh, closed the lid. And as I landed in there, I realized there was somebody else in there. And I said, huh, not much room in here. And a voice came back and said, until you came in, there was plenty of blooming room. That was, my first that was my first meeting with John. Terry Waite has since returned to the city where he was held captive for five years. He's also founded a charity, Hostage International, to help those who find themselves in a similar predicament. Frank Gardner, BBC News.